Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be making a few of these archway models that you can see right here. Everything I make in this video, plus a bunch of other stuff, will be available in this free pack that you can download. There's a link in the description which takes you to this page where you can download this and all the other free stuff I've ever given away. And there's uh, there's individual links, so you can just download the ones you need if you already have some of them. Anyways, if you want to see me make uh, these models right here and explain exactly how I'm doing it, keep watching. That's what this video is. So yeah. Okay, just a quick disclaimer before I get started is some of the techniques of modeling I'm showing in here are a little bit messy and janky. So I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. I'm just saying this is how I like to do it because it works really well for what I need it for. It's really efficient for me. So if that's what you want to see, uh, yeah, just carry on watching. So I have all of these uh, references open right here. I'm actually going to open up Pure Ref. This is a free, you've probably heard of it, but it's a free uh, software. It's just a very nice way to organize reference images. So what you can do is you can actually just drag and drop things directly on here. So uh, these are some mid-journey ideas I was working with. I sent in one of my own 3D models that I made a long time ago. And then I just told it, like, make an archway based off of this. And then it's just giving me some really interesting ideas based off of that 3D model I sent in uh, from there. So I'm, I can actually just take this and drag it directly into Pure Ref. And no, like, file save as and then navigate. You just drag it straight in and it works, which is super, super nice. I didn't know it could do that. Which I didn't use this thing for the longest time because I just thought it was a pain in the ass, but it's actually super easy. So anyways, I'm just going to drag these in like this. I'll, do, I'll drop in my own image actually, because I kind of like this one. And basically my plan here is just like outline uh, or just put in a bunch of archways that I've already, or like a bunch of pictures that are, are of archways that already exist, and then just model something that kind of has that vibe-ish. And then just having images open here is going to really help me decide on like, like different ideas or different things I can try or different Ways I, ways I can com combine different models, like which kind of pillars I should drop in here or styling of textures or like just just free ideas. So I'm just going to drop this in here too. And maybe I don't really need any more. I think that should be fine for now. I've got everything I need to get started. So let me just kind of organize this and then we should be good to go. So I'm just going to drag this to the corner of my screen and just kind of like align it. Yeah. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to delete this because that's a model I already made. I don't need my asset browser because I'm going to be doing everything from scratch in this one. So we can just get rid of this stuff. I'll get the UV editor open later. But for now, again, I don't really need it. And then same with this stuff over here. It's not important for right now. We could delete this, uh, this plane. So empty file, basically. All right, so let's start with... Uh, let's start with the overall shape. So the... Overall shape is obviously an archway. So the easiest way that I think uh, to, to do that is, is just start with a circle. And before I click, I'm going to open this up. And let's set this to 64 vertices. So just double it from the default. And let's rotate it this way. And if you saw my last video, this is exactly the same technique that I was using there. So if I just select all the bottom vertices, delete that, and then just grab these uh, two here that are like half the halfway point of this circle, I can actually just extrude that down, just pressing E to extrude the vertices. And then if I take this and then extrude the entire thing outwards along the Y axis, that is going to give me an archway. So now it's actually three dimensional. Uh, if you just go to edit mode, hit Alt E, uh, Alt E will like bring up this menu and then you just hit extrude faces along normals. And then you can actually do this. You can hold shift to slow it down as usual. And uh, that's basically similar to the solidify in that you can just pull out edges like this or pull out faces from the edges. Anyways, that's there. And uh, I think if you hit Alt E and then you hit, what is it? S or Alt. Okay, I can't remember the exact command or the exact uh, shortcut. But okay, it seems to be working fine, so it doesn't matter. But there was something you can do to like make it uh, line up like the bottom vertices better. But if I hit just, uh, if I just select these, Hit S, Z, 0. That will just make sure, if it isn't already, it'll just make sure it's fully 100% flat. So I might decrease the thickness again uh, if I just kind of grab this. Let's do that. And I'm not sure why there's like two layers on the inside. I'll deal with that in a second. But let me grab this. Hit Alt S and actually make it thin again. Let's duplicate this top half and just see where it goes. Now, I don't need it to look exactly like my reference. It's just there so that I have somewhat free ideas. 
but it does not need to look exactly like this. If it looks completely different, I'm totally okay with that. And I'm not aiming for it to look exactly like this, right? So anyways, let me just duplicate these top parts here. And then maybe this can be like a bit more uh, thick. So let's just hit Alt S on that, bring that in. Yeah. And then select these faces or these uh, edges around this bottom thing. Fill that with a face, just F to fill with a face. Sweet. So I might actually tuck this way in here, duplicate it out again, pull it down even more, like shrink it down even more like this. So let's grab this edge here that you can see me selecting. Hit uh, Control B, click, and then you can actually you can actually dial in all these settings here if you open up this menu. Let me crank up the segments to like 10, 15 ish, and then let's go over to the profile type, switch it to custom, and then let's just draw in like some squiggly line in here that looks like it's some fancy design. I don't know. So like there should be fine. That might be too much even, but it's okay. I'd rather have a little bit too much geometry than not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna bring yeah another one of those in there and then maybe pull it back like this because there's kind of like multiple layers going on here. So something like that. And then yeah, should be good. So let's just throw a cube on here and scale it kind of down like this maybe bring it like this right something like that and then let's uh let's mirror that so just add modifier uh search mirror throw that on mirror against this main archway here maybe so just select the eyedropper click the big archway and then boom okay and let's just kind of line this up so this has like a nice support on it like this and let's just bring this out this way and then I have to figure out how all, all this stuff kind of fits together, but I'm not, I just want to worry about the general shape for now. Let me just pull this. Uh, it's annoying when I alt click the edge to select the row of faces. It's selecting both sides, which I guess is fine. I can just scale it up like this. It's fine. All right. What I might do actually to be able to see everything nicely is uh, throw on, if you switch the color here, it's just a shading drop down in solid or in a, uh, yeah, uh, in uh, object mode. The drop down here, color, if you just switch it to random, gives you this. And then also I might throw on cavity, which just kind of adds, uh, like highlights the edge of it. So I'm going to add edgeware to the texture later, but this is just like a nice way to look at it in the viewport. So that doesn't change the output of, of what we're making, but it just, I guess if it looks nicer, that might motivate you more to uh, keep going. So I'll keep it on there. Okay, so let's get this uh, this little thing here. So I think what I might do is like pull this in a little bit like that. And then there's some like weird stuff going on here. It doesn't really matter what I do. So we can kind of just like maybe inset this. Let's apply scale first. Inset, extrude, take this edge, and then bevel it. Keep the segments relatively low. Boom. That's pretty nice. And then maybe take this top face and then like, I guess I could throw in a bevel modifier and just see what that does, but not, not really necessary. I don't think. Okay. Let's do some pillars. So let's just put the cursor here at a mesh. Let's do cylinder. Now 32 should be fine because we're just going to, it's going to be a pillar. So you're not really going to see at any point, like the top down view of it. Uh, or if you do, it's, it's going to be like small enough that it, it's not going to be a big deal. So 32 is fine for this, I think. And I'll just kind of line it up here and just kind of throw it right there. Let's keep going here. So let's pull this up here. Doesn't need to be a one-to-one -one copy, but just copying the general idea. So let's just, let's just do this. Let's, uh, let's extrude this down, extrude it again. This we can work with. So we'll just extrude scale on the X and Y. So that's S, shift to Z to scale on the X and Y. In other words, to scale on everything except the Z axis. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you hit, I'm sure you know this, but just in case you don't really quickly, S, Z is going to scale on Z, obviously. S, shift Z will scale on everything except the Z, and that works for shift Y, shift X. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. 
So let me take this now. Let's just bring this in and just, I just need something on here. It doesn't matter what. Let's, uh, let's take this bottom edge. Let's bevel this and just kind of do something on there. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And then maybe, maybe, uh, edge loop here, bevel one segment, move it upwards, extrude it in, and then like bevel this and this here with another like one segment. That's fine. Totally fine. Okay. So let's pull this down now to roughly here. And I got to keep this moving along. I got to make sure I don't get too caught up in small details right now. And I might just kind of do a similar design at the bottom here. So let's maybe pull this up a little bit. Uh, just make sure we got this. Uh, let's do E and then like E S shift Z. Take this again, just apply that same bevel. Maybe do the same trick here. Just bevel one segment, increase, pull it down, extrude inwards, these edges, bevel one segment done. Nice. Okay. So this is sitting on some like cuboid type structure. I'll put the cursor to this face. So it's just a uh, shift S cursor to selected shift a cube. And now the cube will be added perfectly aligned with that face because the cursor is there. Okay. So let's scale it down to like right there ish. And it doesn't really matter what I do on here, but it just needs some sort of design. So I like what they have going on here where it's just like this weird, I don't even know what, but like inset, uh, I guess we could just do bevel and then extrude by doing a, or sorry, I didn't mean to, uh, oh, that's funny. Okay. If I do this in face select mode, can I do this without selecting the interface? There we go. Okay. So if you have an edge and it's selected in edge mode and you bevel it, then it'll select all of that, I guess. But if it's in face select mode and then you bevel that, it will just select the beveled part only. Okay. So let's, uh, alt E extrude along normals inwards just like that and now let's uh let's just bevel this so we can just increase those segments again and then we could just hit shift g a again on these maybe inset again um bevel again one segment uh alt e extrude faces along normals bring that in again maybe a bit more this time select these edges if i hit actually if i just select this face shift g a edge select mode and then just go in here manually grab these ones. I don't think I can automatically select these. And then let's just bevel all of that. I wonder if I hit shift G and then length on this one. So it'll select all the edges that are the same length as this. And if I bevel that, is that fine? So this is not like the greatest geometry ever. Actually, that's fine. Okay, now this needs to be mirrored as well. So since there's already a mirror modifier on this, we can just grab these two objects, select the mirrored one last, and then hit Control L. Brings up the link slash transfer data menu. And then you can just link, uh, or just this one right here, copy modifiers. We'll copy the modifiers, for, modifiers from the last selected object. In other words, the one that has the, the active selection. So like the one that has the brighter selection than the other ones. It's kind of hard to see with my theme that I'm using, but um, yeah, I think you, you get, you understand. Now, it, I think it might be cool looking at this before. It kind of seemed like there are multiple pillars side by side along here, but there, there actually aren't, but it would be cool to do that. So I'm going to do that. So let's take these and maybe would it be nice if I just pressed alt D and then moved it along here? I just kind of had that lined up like this. It's not the greatest thing ever to just have it like it's cool. So who cares about that? Let's just do this. Okay. Duplicate this over here. Yeah. And let's try and line this up. So it's actually centered across this pillar. Let's throw it right there. Now I want to start getting the, like the depth of this. So let's try and take this, uh, just select these faces here and just pull that along to the, uh, the depth that I actually want here. So I think that should be fine. Maybe a little bit more even should be good there. And I guess what I might do is mirror this. So let's take a couple of, uh, edge loops and just try and get this cut down the center. I'm going to hit S Y zero and then just see if I can quickly or just 
delete this. Yeah, okay. And then let's do uh, origin to geometry. And then I'm going to add a mirror modifier just so that it mirrors along the Y axis. Let me just apply rotation for that to work. And then if I move the origin point by selecting this option uh, in, in uh, object modes, bring this uh, options menu up and then just hit effect only origins. And then when you hit G, it'll just move the origin point only. And I should turn on clipping as well so that when I move it here, it uh, actually... Er, eh. I guess I'll just get it like one millimeter away and then just take this and just merge it like that. That works. All right. Let's turn off that setting, effect only origins. So that is, uh, that's going to work. So now I can just kind of duplicate this, scale it up and just try to like align it with this here. I think I might just replace, yeah. I'll just replace, I'll delete the one that was there before and just leave this one in here. That's fine. And then we can just bevel this or whatever. I guess I could, uh, I'm going to use this setting here. It's uh, object relations. I can never find this because it's, it's in my quick favorites right here. Relations make single user object and data. This one right here. If you right click this and then assign to quick favorites or assign shortcut. Uh, when I press Q, that brings up my quick favorites. And then uh, if I just hit that object and data right there, what that does, I've explained this before, so you might already know, but just in case you're new, when you press Shift D on an object and you edit the object, obviously it's not going to affect the original one. But if you have an object and you press Alt D on it, now if I affect this one, it's going to affect the original one, right? If I press Alt D, any of those copies will be affected, but the, sh the one that I press Shift D will not. But if you want to unlink this object from the other ones because you pressed Alt D, that object and data setting, if I, if I click that and I edit this one, it's effectively as if I pressed Shift D now. And if you want to go the other way, you can select these two objects and then the, the active one will be the one that transfers over. So you can, so you have a bunch of objects here. I'm pressing Shift D and then I want these all to be linked to this one. I can hit Control L and then link object data and that will make it as if I've now pressed Alt D. And then again, to unlink, just hit that uh, that quick favorites object and data to unlink object and data. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's get back to modeling. So I'm going to be using that a lot in here just because there's going to be some that are linked or some that are unlinked. And uh, this one I'm going to unlink so that it doesn't affect the, the other ones. Anyways, this edge, bevel, something like that is fine. Okay, cool. Now let's keep it moving here. So... I think it might actually be better to have a space in here. So let's just take this and move it over here like this and just line it up right there. We can do some other archways that have like the double arch next to, or the double pillar next to each other. I think that will be nice. But for now, let's just get something done here. Uh, okay, I need to get the rest of this done. So this is all missing. Let's just fill this in already. So let's try this. Uh, I'm going to do that same mirror trick. So this one already has the mirror. Control L, copy modifiers, and apply scale, apply, apply rotation, and then just make sure it's on yeah the Y axis. And then I just need to uh, affect only origins, pull that this way, and just kind of line it up with. Uh, I don't I don't know where the other one is, but I guess there. That seems right. Let's turn that off and then go to edit mode. Make sure clipping is on, grab these, and just boom. That'll just get merged right there. Nice. Okay, and then the rest of this, yeah, same thing. Uh, let me just repeat that once more. Control L, copy modifiers, apply scale, apply rotation. Uh, effect only origins, bring that out this way. Let's just see, I guess I don't really know where this is supposed to line up. Uh... I guess this cent this line right here seems to be working, so I'll just do that. And then, boom, grab these, pull it this way, done. And is that everything? Looks symmetrical, okay, nice. Now I would like more detail in, in here along this. So let me just duplicate this, scale it down, or make sure this is off, the effect on the origins. Scale it down, and then the 
that is actually scaling properly. And then we can just take this. I press shift D so it's safe to edit this. And then we can take this edge here and bevel that nicely. And then that can get, uh, you just select all these front vertices here and just kind of tuck that in somewhere like that. Nice. And then this some might actually bevel as well. So let's take both these and ooh, bevel just a little bit. Maybe decrease the segment slightly. Right there is going to be fine. Okay, I want something in here. Let me take this thing, duplicate, rotate 90 degrees, and then just kind of line it up in here. And let's just kind of put it, if I just scale it up or just uh, GX or GY, point five minus no G Y minus point one and then same thing on here G Y point one. So what that's doing is it's essentially scaling it up without changing the proportions. Cause if I scale this, it's like increasing the distance between all these vertices. But if I just move it, if I slide it along the Y, then it's, it's not doing that. Okay. So anyways, that's can, that could just go like, eh, I don't know in there somewhere ish. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's duplicate it down again. And maybe actually take these vertices and just kind of make it like half as big origin to geometry. And then just kind of slot that in there. This thing is just intersecting through here. And then half of it is just going to, it's getting wasted on like the inside of this model. So that's not great, but it's fine, right? Like who cares? I mean, you could spend time cleaning that up and getting rid of that and merging it all properly and doing super amazing topology, but is that really what you want to spend time doing? Uh, if it is, you can go and do that. But for me, I, I really don't care that much, so I'm not going to be bothered. Okay, there's some interesting stuff happening in here, which I would like to try and replicate if I can. So this, what if I hit Alt-E, extrude faces along normals, and just kind of pull that up this way? Does that look good? Does it destroy the geometry? This is bad. Let me delete that face. And then uh, this is a really helpful key to know if you don't know this. If you hit the slash key, forward slash key, same key as the question mark, but just without pressing shift, that will temporarily isolate whatever object you're working with. And you just press that slash key again. So it's different than pressing uh, shift H because now it's actually hiding everything in here from the viewport. And then when you unhide everything, it might like bring back models you didn't really want to see. But if you press the slash key, it's just, it's actually not hiding it. It's just putting it into like local view for a second. All right. And there's some extra weird like stuff going on here with like weird archway pillar or weird like swirly curved things, but I don't really want to do that. This is cool though. I think the easiest way would be actually just to duplicate one of the pieces I already have, pull that down, rotate it 90 degrees, and just kind of uh, flip it around until we get this kind of shape. So I don't want it to be a half circle like this. So I'm going to delete half of these vertices. And then that can just go like somewhere along here. Now it needs to be coming down like this. Yeah. Now it looks like it's bulging a bit. So I might have to fix that with like an edge loop. Yeah. All right. And then let's just fill a face in there. I guess I could not do that and just extrude it. Why is this? Yeah. Whoops. No. Extrude. Y. There we go. Okay. That's kind of the shape I want. And what happens if I take this inset? Whoops. Uh, inset. Uh, I once will do this on the individual faces. I again will do like one big one. So let's do one big one, Alt E, extrude faces along normals, pull that out like this, take, take this edge along here, and like that, bevel that, let me just see, is that, let me undo that and do that a bit up close. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, where do I go from here? I could start texturing it. I don't know if I really want to do that though. I might actually want to pull this out a little bit more and then have like an, a little archway that goes through here. Let's do that. Let's take this piece, uh, 
duplicate separate by selection to bring up the separate menu. It's just P on the keyboard, separate by selection. Now that piece I had highlighted is now out. It has a mirror, but I don't actually want it. So I'm going to just take that off and then set the origin to geometry. Just right click, set origin to geometry. And now just pull that out and kind of line it up with this thing here. So I'll just kind of, I guess, scale it down a bit. And then, well, no, let me just keep it scaled up. And then we'll, I'll just hit Alt E, extrude faces along normals, pull that inwards like this, and just kind of line it up a little bit like that. And now these are, this is like a bit fucked here. I don't know what's going on. So just select those bottom vertices, S, Z, zero to flatten it. And then the normals might be the wrong way too, because when you extrude downwards instead of extruding upwards, the normals will actually become flipped sometimes. So if you just hit shift N to recalculate them, it should be fine. I guess I should apply scale and then shift N. Now it should be fine. It's not a huge deal if it's flipped, but it's just better to have it not flipped. Okay. And then this can, yeah, just kind of, yeah. Yeah. Bevel and then uh, yeah. Okay. What happens if I inset this? I'm just trying stuff at this point and then extrude along normals. Uh, it's a little bit much. Maybe I don't need to extrude it that much. So extrude and then, yeah, take these. Oops. It's hard to work with these small edges. Bevel. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's fine though. Maybe if I just duplicate it this way, so it's like a bit more even across this thing, like that'll work. Maybe one more. Like that. What happens if I scale up by three? And then scale this up even more. Yeah, let's scale up by a bit more and then just kind of pull it up. Scale down a little bit. I'll just try to align this again so it's running like an even edge along, like all the way along this arch. Now that's a lot of like just lines and bevels along here. So I might not have that in there or maybe like get rid of this one because it is nice to have a bit of empty space, right? Like if it's just detail, 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 like only detail, then it's, it's very hard to look at sometimes. Whereas you see in here, it's like there's sections of like really intricate detail. And then it's next to sections of kind of just open, like there's, there's tiles, but there's not a lot of like carving, like carvings and geometry and like uh, just patterns and stuff. Like this would be in solid view, it'd be like a flat face all the way down at the center section. <laughs> right, so it's like kind of alternating between detail, like very intense detail and then kind of smooth, soft, plain sections. And then really intense detail and then smooth, soft, plain sections, right? Where it's like detail, 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 and then blank face. And I think a, a balance of those two things is very important at all times. And I think this is a little bit too far in the detail direction along here. Maybe not like once I texture it, maybe it'll kind of get rid of that because cavity is also on, which is making it more intense, but yeah, maybe this thing just needs something. What if we do that? Yeah. I don't mind that actually. And then take these and maybe like do a nice bevel along this, maybe just these edges here, control B. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe we could do some detail in here. Like, I don't know, do this. Uh, and then like bevel one segment again, do this trick, extrude it out like this, take these, oops, this and this bevel. Again, I don't want too much detail in there, but yeah, that's okay. Right. So a lot of these archways that I made from scratch, I could just duplicate this out, add a couple of pillars and do like a different formation of that. And just uh, like really quickly model an entirely new thing based off of what I already have. Right. Like that's what's 
cool about about making things from scratch like this is now I have all these separate pieces that I can use to like to make uh, a new model. So I might actually just try that right now. Like if I if I take this mirror and I let's uh, t take it off this thing and put it on this one, and then this can maybe shrink down a little bit and do and like go next to itself, and we can have like four in a row, like this, and then it's kind of messed up at the bottom. I'll fix that later, but this can like come out like this, make sure, make sure it's a uh, cleared object and data. So it's not linked, pull this out and then, yeah. And then this could even like, maybe instead of going on the top, it could go on the bottom and then we could have like a thing here. And I, I know this is like a bit uh, messy here, but I'm just sketching something out. And then this uh, should be mirrored across this thing again. And then that could be like, we could have another one of these on this side, right? Like there's unlimited possibilities now where, uh, oh, that's kind of messed up. Whoops, delete that mirror with eh, this. Okay, nice. And then, you know, we could, uh, we could take this and let's just extrude this straight down on the Z axis, SZ zero at the bottom to make sure it's flat. And then that can go that's actually not the right thing to do. Let's duplicate that one more time over itself. Line it up. Now extrude it down on the Z, SZ, zero. Except it doesn't really make sense to have that there because why would it be like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Let's take, uh, let's hit on this thing. Let's hit control L, copy modifiers. Now this was meant to be just a quick example, but I actually like where this is going. So I'm going to finish this and just kind of like do something. Maybe let's take this, uh, this piece here duplicate that over just copy location of this and then just kind of put it right there line it up so it's yeah maybe duplicate this one more time over itself i wish the origin was back at the uh center point so that it would scale nicely but whatever could fix that but can't be bothered it's not a big deal to just like line it up a little bit manually okay so i'm just gonna move this out of the way I'll show you how I join these together in a second too, but for now, let's just keep going. I'm kind of in the flow right now, so I just want to grind out as many of these as possible. Um, another idea I have is what if I take this thing, let's just take the mirror off, take one of these pillars, and then well, let's take the, these four actually. And let's actually take these as well. So let's take that entire thing, duplicate this over here, get rid of the mirror on all of this stuff. Or I guess an easier way is just convert it to a mesh to apply the mirror and then just delete the extra geometry. Bring this over here. And then let's just uh, move to median point. So I'm not scaling on individual origins, scale this down. I could join it at this point, but I don't need to. And what if I do this? I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just trying stuff, right? Like this, this kind of seems like it would look nice on top of this thing. So I'm going to put it there and just see what happens. Uh, it would be nice if this was isolated so I could actually do this nicely. Yeah, and then this can go here, right? Just line it up. Okay, cool. And then this could be an interesting pillar if uh, if there was another one on top here, like if I Alt D this up here, I'm pressing Alt D because I know that like, if I make a change to one, I probably want it on the other one, maybe. Or what if, uh, what if I take this and let's just do this. I, I might uh, SZ minus one on the top so that when I bring this bottom part up, it actually brings up the top part of the top one or brings down the top. You know what I mean? That's nice. Uh, it's not so like, this is very fantasy at this point. Like I'm not going for a certain style of architecture, which is okay. Like it doesn't need to be accurate. Right. I'm... But yeah, anyways, there's another thing that I can use for later. Like that might be useful in some, in something else. Yeah, I'm going to come back, combine these models I've made, maybe make some new ones, and then just combine them in a bunch of different ways. And I'll just show you exactly how I did that, but I might skip through that. But yeah, I'm going to take a break right now and come back and update you. So I just, I all I did was I just took pieces from this model I already made, and I just did variations of that. So you can see this is just kind of made from this thing by taking the outside faces and just kind of merging them in this square formation. And then I just threw in like this thing on the inside. That goes into this. This is the same piece I made earlier. This is just four of those pillars in a row. And then it's just mirrored on the top and bottom. 
this is just like a cube with a bevel and then that's a new pillar right there that's another variation of that there's the pillar by itself with just those two things on top or the top and the bottom and then a couple other things and that's the thing i made earlier too so i'm gonna do more of that but that's just what i've got for now but i want to move on to texturing before i get too far into this let's texture this so Okay, let me go to rendered view and I have the sky texture and I'm just gonna switch back to the background. So it's just default background 0.5. And that's just an easy way to texture it. You could go material preview as well, it doesn't matter. But anyways, new texture. Let me start with, uh, I was messing around with some AI textures, but I think I'm just gonna use something from ambient CG. I'm gonna use this. So let's drop in the base color, the normal, GL, uh, because Blender uses the GL version of normal maps, and then roughness. I don't, I don't actually know what the difference is, but I just know that I think GL is the proper one to use. Uh, ambient occlusion map, and that should be good. I don't think we need, I don't think we need anything else. So I'll just drop these in here and just quickly set this up. So, just doing a basic standard texture setup. So if we just kind of expand this, uh, so the base color will get mixed with the ambient occlusion sorry we need to mix uh, color and that just goes to multiply so base color in a ambient occlusion in b multiply and that goes to the base color nice and i'll just uh cube project this just for the sake of having a uv map on here just so you can actually see something and then you can control this whatever i'll just throw it on one and then roughness just goes there and then I guess uh, I'm not really sure what that is doing. Yeah, I'm not going to use this actually. I might just crank that up to one, uh, or or maybe just take a color ramp and like, because this looks really shiny. I think I'm just going to do this because I don't want it shiny. Okay, normal map. We just need a normal. Oh, the other thing is this is supposed to be on non-color data. How could I forget that? Okay, this non-color, non-color, and that seem that roughest map seems to actually. A bit better now that it's on non-color i still might do this though but yeah okay anyways normal map again non-color whoops non-color and then we just need a normal map node that goes in there that goes in there what i'm doing that shortcut i'm pressing is just alt right click and drag that just connects up the normal map doesn't work for all nodes but it does work for a normal map and that's just easy way to do it okay so that is in there now it's just a basic standard texture setup but i want to do some more stuff to get it to look nice i'm gonna throw curves on here and let's just see what that does i was messing with this texture earlier on some different models and uh it looked nice when i just made it brighter so i'm just gonna try that and then maybe let's take a mix color switch it to multiply again multiply and then on slot b i can actually use the eyedropper if i click anywhere inside blender and then actually drag out of blender that will uh usually work and just give me whatever color i have selected over here i think you might have to do it quickly but it does work anyways that's going to give me this kind of color and we can just multiply that in a little bit like that i don't think the order matters here like i could do one before the other uh, but anyways brighter and a bit more yellow that's nice okay so that's on track but there's still more i want to do this is this kind of has that edgeware effect that uh the reference i sent in was this one which is actually the same texture i'm using here except with a bit of edge wear, and I think that got translated into here nicely. So I'm going to replicate that. Here's how you do it. I'm going to take an ambient occlusion node. We can turn down the samples because we don't need very many. And then another mix color node. Again, switch to multiply. So we're going to multiply this ambient occlusion into the base color. So base color goes slot A, ambient occlusion slot B, which means when we go like this, it's going to be like full multiplied in. Uh, there's some other stuff I need to do to actually make this work. So ambient occlusion is not meant for this, but I'm just kind of forcing this to work to create edgeware by doing this. So if you check these two boxes here, inside and only local, and then just turn the distance down to like 0.03 or something like that. And then if you just take a color ramp, drop it in here, and then control shift click the color ramp to uh, view exactly what this is doing. When you control shift click something, I think it's the node wrangler that's doing this, that node wrangler add-on. It just previews the node, so 
uh, we're just previewing this. If I control shift click the principle, it just goes back to the regular texture. But if I control shift click any node, it'll just preview that node. Okay, you probably knew that, but just in case you don't, that's what it's doing. Okay, so let me get this on here. And then I want to actually flip this color ramp around. And you'll notice that it's now s like highlighting just the edges. And when you check those two boxes inside and only local, it'll just, it, it'll highlight the inside edges of only this object, not connected to any other object. So you'll see that like, if there's something uh, nearby, if you don't check that only local box, any intersecting mesh will like appear there. Only local just means it's only that model. And then inside just means that it's like the, the inside corners of this. I think what I want to do here is just find a value that works. I'm going to go 0.005, and that seems like a good starting point. I don't think samples past a few really matters in this case, so I'll just leave it at 5. Okay, so now to get this into the texture nicely, um, you could just increase the factor, but that has this problem that it makes everything darker, like really, really dark, and then it just leaves kind of the edges at the value that it was at before. So to fix that, if you actually set the lowest point in this color ramp to one, meaning these are both at one, so it's not going to do anything, and then set the highest point, which used to be just white. If you set that to beyond one, so like maybe 10, that means that the lowest point is going to be one, which when multiplied in stays the same color. And the highest point is going to be 10, which when multiplied in, I guess is like 10 times brighter than the original color. Doesn't really look like 10 times brighter. It looks like maybe two times brighter, but that just having a, high, a, a value higher than one is going to look nice here. And then again, here, it's just kind of about finding like a, a position on the color ramp and then a, a distance value that works with, uh, with this model. I might do this too. I might take a noise texture and then take another, uh, color, like a multiply. Well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I might not even do that. I might just add a mixed color node default, leave it on mix, mix in the noise. And then just kind of like have this on a tiny bit. Let's do another color ramp in here. So color ramp in, and then just kind of like, I think I need to use object coordinates because, oops, uh, it's stretched out. So we'll go object coordinates, increase the scale a little bit. And then it should be like this. And let's see if, uh, if this gets crunched through this color ramp, is it going to destroy my ma my uh, texture? Let's just see if I can do this without ruining everything. I might have to just view it from here. Right, so if I mix it in too much, this is kind of a janky way to do it, but if I mix it in too much, it's just gonna add like light spots. But let me see if I can find uh, a way to do this that just kind of makes it a bit darker in some areas. But maybe I, have to, I do have to switch this to multiply. And then, yeah, might have, might have to be add because it's actually getting inverted. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go add. And then, so this should, since it's getting inverted, only make certain sections darker, I believe. Let me see. Okay, I'm a bit confused as to what I'm actually doing, but this seems, this seems to be working, so I'm going to just run with that. Okay, nice. And then if I just kind of mess with the scale and whatever, that just kind of adds some noise to the, uh, the edgeware. Now, this is kind of bad here how it's like really, really intense here and then kind of lacking in here. So that might just be a problem with uh, this model particularly, but oh well. Okay, so let's see what happens if I start putting this on the other models in here. Um, I'll just quickly run through all of this stuff here. Okay, let's unwrap this because this is going to be annoying, but not that bad. So let's hit Control L Material. Just get that on there. So now everything has this one material. These, okay. Or I'm just not going to do that. Or we can just Q project it and just call it a day. That's fine. Okay. Now to unwrap archways at the like the the arch part of the archway. Here is how you do it. Um. Let me select everything. Hit U and then hit reset. Okay. So we just reset the UV map. It's going to do this. It's going to look a bit strange. But after it's reset, you can hit U again, and then actually hit follow active quads. And then we'll just hit length. I'll leave it on length average, that's fine. And now it's going to do this. And you'll notice that although it's terrible, it is actually following the curve 
of this archway, which is a step in the right direction. So now that it's following that, this active face is actually, um, I think it's the, the highlighted one here. So if I move this along, you can see like the highlighted face here is matching up with the one on the UV map that I am selecting. So what I, what I want to do is actually just match the aspect ratio of this square to whatever's highlighted here. So it could be left to right or it could be up, up, and, up and down. And I think it, in this case, I think it's up and down. So all I want to do is just make this the kind of same shape of rectangle that this already is. And then everything should line up properly. And it looks like it is. It's just way too big. So let me just scale it by like 0.1. And then there we go. And it looks like I need to do some more work on the edgeware because it's not quite doing what I want in here. But that is, that's fine. That's easy to deal with. All right, so let's get out of here and just repeat that on here. I might be able to do this. But probably not. What if I hit uh, copy UV maps? Looks like no. Okay. So I think I could probably batch do this like with all of these arches at once. So if I if I just hit U reset, U uh, follow active quads, OK. Uh, just find one of these faces here. Scale it down to match that aspect ratio of this square right here. Okay, cool. Looks good there. This thing, cube project, honestly. Uh, just try and line it up where there's not too many seams. It doesn't really matter. I guess I could like uh, do a, a smart UV project that might be better. Ooh, that looks fine. Yeah, I'll I'll just leave that where it is. So if I if I switch back to like sky texture. And all of a sudden, when we have shadows in here, uh, it just it looks like it belongs there, and it looks proper and right. It could be better, but that's a it's a fine starting point, you know. And there's all sorts of stuff. Like I want to do a bit more work on the texture here. We can add a bit more grunge and add some overlays and get the edgeware a bit better and add actual ambient occlusion, and it's going to look really nice by the end. But um, yeah, let's just switch back to background the uh, background here for now, and we're looking good. So this is where I wish I would have waited to duplicate all these parts out because now it's just like unlinked and it's I have to re-unwrap all this stuff which is okay but it's kind of annoying but uh, anyways that's how you unwrap everything okay I'm gonna go do this one really quick and I'll come back when I when I finish that because you don't need to see me do that for you know the 50th time okay I think what I might do is not worry about this thing right here because this is just annoying and that's the only model that has this like messed up part of the texture. I'll fix that later. I'm just going to texture this for everything else, not not uh, just accommodating for that one annoying piece. So let's just not worry about that right now and just make this look good here. So I want the ambient occlusion distance definitely to be higher. So let's just increase that to like 0.03 maybe. Maybe a little less, 0.015. And then we can make this fall off a little bit more uh like this so yeah so remember this is inverted the color ramp is inverted and it's set to a higher value so this would be like um when, when you set it up you'll you'll kind of know what you're doing uh, let's re reduce the noise slightly maybe reduce this a little bit and that should be okay So it's a bit extreme, but I kind of like this effect uh, pretty strong. So I'm going to leave it right there. Now let's also throw in ambient occlusion for like proper ambient occlusion, not for edgeware. The way I'm going to do that is just a new ambient occlusion node. Actually, I'll just take a fresh one. Uh, what am I doing? Ambient occlusion here. So that is going to get multiplied in. So ambient occlusion in. Okay. And... We'll go distance, like, eh. And I can leave off all these other checkboxes. We can actually set the samples low here, too. So it doesn't matter. And then one more thing I could do just to make this more interesting is, uh, not this, not messing around with AI textures there, is uh, take a map from maybe textures.com. This thing's fine. I'm not worried about the color because I can just desaturate it. But let's try this. Another mixed RGB 
or rather, sorry, I always mess, I always mess that up. Mix color node with, set to multiply. That textures.com image would go to slot B. Like I said, I'm not worried about the the color right now because I can just take a, a hue saturation and make this like 0.1. I might take a color ramp and actually that means this hue saturation will be redundant so I can take that out. And this will let me just control exactly what I want this to be doing. So I think that's fine. I'm, I could try just swapping out this image too for other things like this. Um, or what if I just remove this entirely, take a take a RGB curves node, desaturate it before that, and then just brighten this up. Maybe decrease the shadows. Maybe let's try like swapping this for a different image. So I don't know this thing. I don't really know what this is, but it might look cool in here. Let's try turning the saturation back up. Maybe. Not sure I like this. Ooh, overlay looks kind of cool. And then maybe this is a bit too strong now. Something like that is kind of nice because it feels like very, there's like lots of texture in here, lots of grunge. It's kind of what I want. So that is nice and grungy. I think I'm happy with that. Let's deal with this thing now because this is just really bothering me. Um, like old stone. And then I'll, if you hit this button right here with the whatever numbers beside it, that will make it its own unique texture and it'll just name it whatever. So I'll just not name it. It's old stone 001 now. And now I should just be able to reduce the ambient occlusion amount on this one and just not have it affect the other one. So whichever thing is causing the edge wear, this stuff over here, let's just reduce that to like, let's just put another zero in there. Point of, uh, yeah, something like that. It's fine. Okay. And then, yeah, anything with this, we'll just hit Control L material. So now it just kind of makes a bit more sense. Okay, so anyways, you get you get how I'm texturing it now, right? Like it's, um, you can see this process. Like I'm doing the same thing over and over again at this point. So I think what I'm going to do is keep adding variations of this model and just keep modeling stuff off camera. And then I'll come back when uh, when I've just got as much stuff as I want. Because uh, I can really combine these in so many different ways. Yeah, I'm going to do some stuff off camera and then I'll show you how to join it together. Okay, so I went ahead and just kind of finished all this stuff here. Uh, nothing special. I just kind of was repeating the same thing I was just showing over the last, well, the entire rest of the video. Um, but yeah, I just kind of went and refined a bunch of stuff and made variations of what I've already created just using those pieces. But let me show you now how to actually save this as a, like a nice asset, like a nice just completed model that you can use in your asset browser and just pull into any other project. So right now, these a bunch of these are joined and kind of finished, but uh, a few of these ones at the end, I haven't actually joined yet. So they're all still their individual loose parts like this. So here's how you get it to just really easily fit together as one chunk, as one mesh, or as uh, one model rather. Okay, so if you just select all of this stuff, um, a lot of this will have like modifiers on it, like near modifiers or uh, bevels or whatever. It's kind of annoying to go through one by one and like apply each one before you join it. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, it'll just get messed up. So uh, just a quick, easy way to do it all at once. I think I've already showed this, but just in case you missed it. If you just select all the, the objects you want to join together, uh, right click, convert to mesh. Uh, but first, actually, before I do that, let me just... Object, relations, make single user, object and data. Again, I have this in my quick favorites. So if you right click that, add to quick favorites. When I press Q, that object and data comes up here. And that just means it unlinks it from any of the other models so that when you join it, if there's a linked copy on any other models, it'll just unlink it and then it won't like destroy your entire scene. Okay, so I'm gonna go object and data and then convert it to mesh. And then now it's applied all modifiers all of these objects all at once and it's now safe to join. So if I just hit control J, it's perfectly joined. Everything's working properly. There might be some, some shading issues. So if you just right click shade, auto smooth, apply scale, like just the usual stuff you would do. And then if you just turn on the setting right here, affect only origins, 
you might want to set the origin to geometry first if it's not centered but then turn effect turn on effect only origins and then just pull this origin point right down to like the bottom part of where the mesh is like hitting the floor kind of doesn't have to be perfect but somewhere around there i just like doing it that way because then you know if i'm if i'm using this model around the scene and i want to like scale it down i want it to to scale down like relative to the floor so that's there and then uh yeah that's that's done i would just name this archway whatever and then you just you know the drill you just right click mark as asset and then it's in there one other thing is uh you know i'm, I'm not doing this properly i'm just setting it to the current file but um you know you would just save this blend file in a location that your asset browser can read from and uh if you're not sure how to use the asset browser just go on youtube literally type in blender how to use the asset browser and uh you'll you'll figure it out it's not that hard i hope that was useful uh enjoy this pack or enjoy making your own models if you're gonna just do it yourself uh yeah again it's for free in the description if you want or you can just remake them on your own and yeah take care bye